how can a regular person uh, like we all make decisions every day and some days we make bigger decisions than others like maybe changing jobs or staying or leaving our partner or something big so how can one go about let's say calculating the risks of any decision that we make let's take the job example um say i'm at my job right now i'm looking for a new job and i got one but then i i can't really decide whether to take it or stay how would one go about making that decision it's a good question um i have a bunch of things to say and invite you to to challenge follow up and and um uh chime in uh so the the sort of classic model of multi attribute decision making where you've got a complex thing like a job that's got lots of features right so there's the, how much it's going to pay you yeah and you can attempt some expected value calculation like eh the the job comes with this fixed salary but then there's these bonuses and maybe i can estimate the probability i'm going to win the bonuses and maybe there's a lot of advancement opportunity so my pay might go up and i'll get these other learning opportunities and i can think about how valuable those are and then there's things that are harder to quantify like i'd have to move to this different city is the city a nice place to live do i have friends there how do i think my life would be and trying to um uh, weigh these different concerns relative to one another it, it forces you to to weight each of these components and then try to sum up their values um and that can be a real challenge the simple minded version where you just list pros and cons for each decision and treat them as if they're all equally valuable uh you can do better than that by weighting each of these considerations by its importance that that'll never be perfect uh but um uh it, it it's worth doing uh trying to think systematically about the different features of the, each each decision that that matter to you and as i talk through this you're probably thinking this sounds very cold and cognitive right people don't like this quantitative approach to multi attribute decision making because it seems like it's just bringing the head into the decision and what about your heart and your passions and how you feel about the job or the opportunity okay um your heart has something interesting to say and the ideal some people say ah you can't quantify everything you just got to go with your gut do follow where your heart leads you mm, well really um uh, what how how is your heart guiding you um, there are intuitive processes that sometimes lead us to feel a particular way about a job opportunity or a lover or um, a, a, a bet, and um, that intuition, that feeling, comes from somewhere. There are calculations going on somewhere inside you, but you can't audit that intuition, right? When you do the multi-attribute utility analysis and it comes up with an answer that seems weird, you can think, well, are those numbers right? But when, you're, when it's your intuition, when, when it feels like your heart is telling you you need to take the new job, well, how did your heart decide? What is it considering? Yeah. It, uh, go ahead. I'll just chime in. And like, if, if you follow your feelings all the time, I'll give a super simple example. If I'm really hungry and I go to the grocery store, <laughs> I'm going to buy candy. I'm going to buy cookies uh -huh. and biscuits and, and all the shit that's bad for me, right? So, like, you can't always trust your gut feeling. Yeah. that's It's just as simple as that. And if, if you could, then no one would be fat. No one would be smoking. No one would be drinking too much. It's just... Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th those are great examples and highlight exactly some of the risks in following where your heart leads you, your intuitive sense of what's appealing or desirable that can lead us down some destructive paths. So um, I, I'm not going to say you should always ignore your heart, that you should never follow your instincts or your intuition. But the ideal is to get your head and your heart communicating with one another. If you run the numbers, and the numbers say you should take the new job, but your heart's not in it. You don't feel that that's right for you somehow. Well, okay, what is your heart 
considering that isn't reflected in the numbers. And this isn't about always giving your intuition veto power over what your more deliberative cognitive processes might tell you to do, but it's about being fully informed and trying to understand where those intuitions come from. Sometimes reflecting on that can help you gain insight into why it is that your heart is leading you into a particular direction. Mm -hmm. So does confidence in like one area uh, help with confidence in, an, in another area? My research suggests that the correlation between different areas and how confident people are, um, that those correlations are pretty weak. Uh, that many of us go through our social lives looking for, looking to identify types, trying to figure out what sort of person each one that we know is. Um, are you a confident person, for instance? Um, and there's some people that exhibit confidence, what appears to be confidence in, in some aspects of their lives, like you're in a meeting with them and they talk more than other people or they they interrupt people more often, or maybe they're confident by volunteering their opinion more often than others do, or they're the first ones to take action in a crisis. Um, sometimes those sorts of behaviors, what could appear to be confidence, actually derives from feelings of inadequacy, right? We all know people who feel obligated to brag about their smallest successes in a way that seems like they're covering up some feeling of, of inadequacy. Um, and if you try to get objective measures of confidence, like how much weight do you think you can bench press? How fast do you think you can run? How um, much do you think other people like you? How likely do you think it is that your investments will pay off? The confidence across these different areas of life is very poorly correlated. So um, I'm reluctant to say that there are some types of people who are more confident or overconfident about everything because my systematic studies have trouble finding those regularities.